An invention is not a revolution. It is only the beginning of a journey. Inventions introduce innovation into our society. Revolutions happen when innovation spreads and dramatically changes our everyday life. Printing with woodblocks started in China in the 9th century. 400 years later, metal, movable type printing began to be used in Korea. But it is in Europe that printing became a revolution. Until the 1450s, books were written by hand. But in 1455, the Gutenberg Bible was printed in Mainz, changing society forever. In 50 years, millions of printed books circulated around Europe. Half a million of these still survive today. The significance of the printing revolution became so obvious for our culture that scholars forgot to explain why and how it had unfolded, while there are important lessons to be learned. The 15th century book trade is a large research project that uses books as historical evidence. Based at the University of Oxford and funded by the European Research Council, it studies the economic and social impact of the invention of printing on early European society. By applying digital technology to historical evidence, this project has transformed our ability to understand the printing revolution and has become a cultural phenomenon in and of itself. A team based in Oxford, the British Library and Venice coordinates contributions from over 360 European and American libraries and over 130 editors. It is led by Christina Dondi. In their 500 years of history, books moved extensively throughout the world, leaving traces of their movement. Now we have developed an innovative technology that tracks that movement over time and space, and an extensive database that brings together tens of thousands of records. By following the books, we track the circulation of ideas and knowledge. Editors tag this evidence geographically and chronologically, so they can visualize the journey of each book. This is an edition of the works of Aristotle, printed in Venice in 1483. The decoration from southern Germany tells us that the book was exported outside Italy soon after printing. The coat of arms tells us more. It belongs to Wenceslas Brack a physician from Salzburg who died in 1495. He left his books to the canons of Weissenau in Germany. This is confirmed by the inscription. After three centuries and the suppression of Bavarian monasteries in 1802, the book entered the international book market and ended up in the hands of the British classical scholar Samuel Butler. And when his collection was sold at auction in 1840, the Bodleian Library in Oxford purchased it for 18 pounds. Every book tells a story, but a story that goes beyond the words written in it. It is about the people who used it and the annotations and the drawings they left in their margins. If a book tells a story, thousands of books make history. The project has captured similar evidence from almost 50,000 books spread around Europe and the United States, becoming a stepping stone that will change our perception of early printing. Scribbles, old scrap. This is the account book of the Venetian bookseller Francesco De Magis who in under four years sells 25,000 printed books with their prices. This extraordinary document will change our understanding of the economic impact of the printing revolution. Prices dropped dramatically and books quickly started to be distributed using international trade routes. Venice soon became the largest printing and exporting center in Europe. There seem to be three really important outcomes from the 15th century. 
book trade project. The first is that it's based on first-hand examination of actual copies of books printed during the 15th century, books known as incunabula. Out of that comes uh, a parallel with the digital revolution that has uh, taken over during our lifetimes and it has allowed us to make new sorts of statements and understanding uh, of the way in which changes in form affect change in content and I think that's a very important contribution to our understanding not just of the past but of the present. And the third element in all of this is the way that the project has communicated its findings and the importance of what is being done to the general public. Rather than being the exclusive preserve of people who are uh, purely scholars themselves, it is addressing its findings to a larger group of people who find this sort of thing extremely exciting and interesting, and they will have a chance to see at first hand what has been discovered through the exhibition in Venice this September. In September, all these new findings will be shared with the public in an exhibition in Venice at the Correa Museum and the Maciana Library. The European Research Council has made this study possible and helped its academic dissemination, but we believe that these results should also be shared with the widest public. We hope many of you will support the funding of this innovative and visionary exhibition in Venice. The printing revolution reminds us how education, research and culture not only advanced civilization during the Renaissance, but are part of the European identity today. <laughs>